Hello, everybody. The DUI guy is back. I hope everyone is having a great, great holiday weekend. And we are going to be having lots and lots of fun, as we always do. I think uh, you guys are going to love today's topic. It's absolutely one of my absolute favorites uh, of all time. And I love talking about it. I love teaching the public. Uh, I remember when I was on uh, Audit the Audit, uh, another channel that I did an interview on, uh, I had a, a brand new audience, of course. It wasn't my channel. I was just a, a guest uh, on, on John's, uh, channel audit, the audit. And they, it was just fascinating. Some of the responses, uh, some of the comments from people were, were just absolutely amazing. I mean, I was astonished that so many people didn't know that they should not talk to the police. And today we're gonna, we're gonna talk about why. So, and I know it's fight night tonight. So I'm going to try and, and make this short, sweet, and to the point. Uh, I found out actually that it was fight night last Saturday too. Uh, and that is why the audience was uh, so much smaller. And luckily, the, the fight night tonight is later. It's at 9 p.m. Eastern. So it's in about two and a half hours. So people will probably be gathering for that here shortly. Uh, so I'm going to try and keep this short, sweet, to the point. I mean, it's just such a, a fascinating and fun topic uh, and it's it, it important, of course, it's crucial because many people don't understand and they don't have the wherewithal, just the, the knowledge, the simple knowledge, the ignorance of the fact that, uh, you know, that if they talk to the police, they may be able to help their case, which is never, never, never uh, the truth. And uh, you all will will find out why here very, very shortly. Uh, so first of all, again, welcome, everyone. I see some... Uh, Local faces here. Hey, Daniel, F. Lotog, Rob, One Endodome, Australia checking in. What's going on, Don Davo? Hello, Mary Jones. You better behave. Hey, Real Jingy, John, Jazz. Good to see everyone. Good to see everyone. I'm, I'm happy that you're all here. Don't forget to like this video, comment below, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, hit that notification bell uh, so you get notified anytime I go live. And when I start posting new videos, you'll see uh, and you'll get a chance to see the uh, videos. So first, as we always do, let's, uh, let's do a quick intro. Again, my name is Larry Foreman. I'm also known as the DUI guy. For those of you who don't know me, uh, I practice law here in Louisville, Kentucky. So uh, what I'm going to be talking about is universal uh, throughout the United States, uh, possibly even other countries. I don't know. I can't give legal advice to that effect. I can only give legal advice in Kentucky. Uh, but what I'm about to talk about is universal throughout the United States for certain. OK, um, the uh, recently we hit 50,000 subscribers, everybody, 50,000 subscribers. I was waiting for that number for so long. Uh, it, it, it took like, I don't know, sometimes like it, it spikes, you know, subscribers come and go and, and the numbers come and go. And I am just hyped. I am so, so, so thrilled. I, I can't believe it. Honestly, I, I was looking at the numbers and it, it's just, it's insane how just in January or no, I'm sorry, last November, last November, I was like at, at 10,000. I think I have the, the moniker, uh, congratulating me or whatever that I downloaded from the, the website uh, on 10,000 subscribers. That was last November. And here we are a year later, 12 months later, and we're at 50,000 subscribers. That That is literally like, it's insane. It, it's insane. And I'm just ecstatic. So um, once once we hit exactly a flow tog, uh, once we hit um, 100, 100,000, you get like the little play button and uh, it's probably going to go on, on that, that wall right there. It's probably going to go right below um, uh, the, the top 1% lawyers in the country. Uh, I, think, I think it's going to be, I, it looks like it belongs there, doesn't it? I, but that's a long ways out. That's a long ways out. We will, we will eventually get there uh, hopefully next year. Hopefully next year. So super stoked. 
Um, <clears throat> next, some of you already know, uh, Flotog is in here. I think I saw uh, maybe somebody else. You'll see the green name. Um, memberships are available if you hit that join button if you're so inclined there are two tiers there's the basic tier which allows you access to emojis and badges uh, i'm in the process of fixing the emojis a little bit uh, the emojis do seem to be a little not visible for some reason like when when you look at the big picture because the originals are about this big of the emoji and the the facial expressions in the emoji are very very clear but when you shrink it down to the emoji size as you can see here, uh, the emotions are not so very clear, not so very visible, unfortunately. So I'm I'm working on on fixing that, and hopefully, uh, some of them are. I mean, like the 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 one with the hearts over the eyes, I think, is a little obvious, and the one where I, I look uh, uh, frightened, I think, is kind of clear. But some of them are not. So I'm in the process of working on fixing those, so you guys can have a little bit more fun with those. Um, and maybe make them, I asked them, uh, my creator, to make them darker, and hopefully she's going to be able to uh, uh, accommodate so that they're going to be more visible and a lot more fun for you guys. So uh, memberships are available. If you're so inclined, by all means, join the channel. You get perks. And uh, once I life normalizes uh, a little bit, uh, the higher tier is going to have access to much, much uh, greater uh, perks, much greater access to, to perks. So, with that introduction out of the way, let's get comfy, let's get excited, uh, let's get started talking about one of my favorite topics of all time, which originally, if you guys remember, on the calendar, and I did this intentionally, on the calendar, the topic was uh, when you should versus when you should not talk to the police. And of course, uh, if you have uh, already had a chance to look at the title before you clicked on it, uh, I wrote very, very provocatively, and this is intentional, why you should never, ever talk to the police under any circumstances or at any point in time, and I included an another, ever. Okay? Never, ever, 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 period. Okay, thank you all for coming. I appreciate it. It's been a great talk. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, I mean, that literally, I could end the, the conversation right here. That's literally the, the title in and of itself is the topic, is the topic of conversation, is um, the, the end all and be all, okay? The end all and be all. There is no ands, ifs, or buts about it. And don't just listen to me. We're going to go through some individuals throughout history and some individuals who are more notorious in the, the criminal law field, including the Supreme Court of the United States that has made uh, comments on the issue uh, in some of its opinions. And you will see why this is so crucial and, and how important it is to keep your mouth shut and not give any information to the police, no matter how innocent you think that it might be. Okay. Uh, so first and foremost, uh, I will be posting this in the, the link below once uh, this live concludes and uh, it's going to be made public for everybody to watch because uh, I think this is this is one of the most important videos probably that I will ever make uh, on YouTube. Um, is I'll, I'll include a link to, to the talk. This is uh, James Dwayne. He's a professor at Harvard Law. Uh, some of you may be familiar with it. It's a very, very, very famous talk. It has racked up nearly 10 million views on YouTube. And there was another channel that uh, actually violated copyright and uh, stole his video uh, and put it on their channel. It was later taken down, but not before they racked up an additional 6 million views. So collectively, this video has nearly 16 million views uh, across the board historically, at, at the very least. Maybe, you know, rewatches included and so on. But still, that is a huge number, uh, given the fact that it's it's actually just a law school lecture and it's titled Don't Talk to the Police. Uh, and the lecture is very relatively short. It's 46 minutes. Uh, 26 minutes is uh, Officer James Duane giving his point of view. And then for 20 minutes, one of the police officers in the Virginia Police Department gives his point of view and basically confirms everything the professor has just said. Uh, so I, I very, very much encourage after you guys finish watching my live stream, uh, like I said, it'll be included in the description below. So be on the lookout uh, and, and watch it. Watch it. A lot of the, the points that I'm going to cover here are covered in his lecture and in much greater depth and, and, and much uh, better articulated. So, uh, and he's uh, he's a professor, so you you know uh, all all credit goes to him. 
so never talk to the police under any circumstances ever, 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 ever. Why? Okay. And then the question becomes, uh, people like to talk. And I always like to mention uh, when, when I'm asked this question, people think that if I, you know, we're used to, when we're accused, when we're little kids and we maybe take, uh, I like the example of taking the cookie out of the cookie jar and, and, you know, the mother knows how many cookies she made. She knows that there's one missing from the pallet or the jar or what have you. They, they have you red handed, but they ask you, you know, did you take the cookie? Right. You're not going to plead the fifth when you're a, a five, six, seven year old boy or girl. You're going to answer. No, I did not. Why are you accusing me? You know, you're, you're going to start making up excuses. We it's inherent in human beings. It's human nature to want to acquit ourselves, to talk our way out of the situation, because we think if I simply say, you know, the right things, the right sequence of words that that will get the individual that is questioning me off my back. Uh, you know, you don't take into consideration that the person across from you may be very good at reading body language, very good at understanding human psychology. You know, if you go from sitting upright the, at the beginning of the interview to being completely slouched in your chair, by the time you're done with the interview, that goes to show that uh, things that have been said about you or to you and so on have affected you negatively and you maybe partly are to blame for uh, some of the crimes that you're being accused of. So body language plays a huge role. And I'm not going to go into all the investigative techniques that these police officers use uh, here in the United States, but you all are more than welcome to do some research on your own. And you'll find out that there's almost no limit to the psychological torture that they can put you through uh, when you go into uh, what they like to call an interview room. Uh, they conduct, as, as you'll see from the lecture, they don't conduct interrogations or they don't conduct investigations. They don't conduct questioning. They conduct interviews. And interview is such an innocent word. It's like you're coming in for a job interview, right? You're you're coming in to to be questioned about your credentials to apply for a position. Whereas, you know, of course, you're 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 being interrogated. They just don't call it that because it's it's such an ugly word. Uh, and jurors would be horrified uh, if they were ever placed in a position where a police officer is testifying and how they they grilled and interrogated a suspect. Uh, and obtained, you know, possibly a false confession. So here's here's basically um, how it works. When you walk into, uh, or you know, this happens over the phone. You could be walking into a room, uh, interrogation room. They could be coming to your house. Uh, the, the, like I said, they could. It just could be a phone call, and it's going to be recorded, mind you. Okay. Uh, and in most states, uh, you know, uh, as long as one of the parties is aware that the recording is being made, it's going to be admissible in court. So as long as the police officer obviously know that they are recording the conversation, anything you do, anything you say over the phone will be admitted against you. So the problem is uh, anything you say, first of all, we know the Miranda warning, anything you say can and will be used against you in court. Uh, it should be rephrased. Uh, anything you say absolutely positively will be used against you in court as long as it helps our case. That's the reality of the situation. So when you are confronted with a police officer, he or she has one goal, and that is to extract them. They have a suspicion. They obviously have a suspicion. They think that you may or may not have been involved in some type of criminal activity, and they are there to confirm, uh, and usually they're, they're not looking for it to be denied. They're looking to confirm this um, uh, the suspicion that they have, that you have committed some type of criminal activity. So it doesn't matter how much time they will spend as much time as they need. It is you, the other individual on the other end, who's trying to get out of the situation as quickly and painlessly as possible. The police officer is on the clock. They're getting paid no matter what. It is you who wants to make this short, sweet to the point and, and get the heck out as quickly as possible. But the problem is, and this is what the police officers count on, as I mentioned just a minute ago, people want to show that they are innocent. They want to prove to the individual on the other end of the line who is an officer of the law that they are innocent of the crime. And the problem is that they run into when they start talking, they say things that may be incongruent. They say things that may be exaggerated. They will say things that they absolutely positively believe to be true, but may not be true. And innocently so. They may not even know that it is not true. And any of those things can be used against you in the court of law in various ways. Now, one example that I really, really like from the lecture that uh, I, I suggested is um, 
you know, an individual, let's say, uh, has been murdered, your neighbor, and you're brought in for questioning. And uh, the police officer asks, you know, where, where were you? What were you doing uh, at such and such time on such and such day? Uh, and you'll, you'll respond with something like, like, I wasn't even there. I wasn't anywhere near the place. I don't own a gun. I don't have a gun. I, I don't have a knife. I never killed anybody. I never killed my neighbor. I mean, I never liked the guy, but nobody did, you know, and it's, I was nowhere near the place and I didn't want to da, 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 da. You see what happens. What the prosecutor is going to do, he's going to take, or she is going to take that one phrase. I never liked the guy. They're not going to bother with all the other mumbo jumbo that you spewed about how you weren't involved in the crime. And I think uh, the professor Dwayne, by the way, actually does it spectacularly because I've seen prosecutors do this and I've done it myself on the other end of the spectrum of the defense line. When uh, my client has said something favorable and it's on video and it's on camera and I can prove it and show it and highlight it. Um, they will take those words. I never liked the guy blow them up in a PowerPoint Make them, you know, the, each letter is going to be this big. It's going to be in red blood point, you know, font. And they're going to put it on the PowerPoint for, for the jurors to see. I never liked the guy. And you can imagine what sort of emotional impact that's going to have on a jury. Who's there to decide whether or not you're innocent or guilty of, a, of murder, you know? Uh, and no matter what other evidence they have, you said it. Not somebody else. This is not somebody saying something about something that you have said. These are your words being used directly against you. And therein lies the problem because people make mistakes. People say things, people say stupid things and you cannot catch everything that you're going to say. And you cannot trust yourself, no matter how intelligent you think you are, no matter how bright you think or educated that you think that you are, I would never talk to the police myself, and I consider myself an educated man. It's not because I don't trust myself. It's because I know better. And when you understand this concept, when you let go of all these preconceptions that you think that you're going to be able to talk your way out of the situation, then you will learn that talking to the police in no way, shape, or form can possibly help you. Always ask for a lawyer. OK, you don't have to plead the fifth or or make any fancy terms to the police officer. Simply say, I will not speak to you until my lawyer is present. Once those words are uttered, the police officer has no choice but to procure a lawyer for you. Uh, there is a case um, from I, I can't remember. It's from a while back where an individual did not accurately um, uh, explain that they, they wanted a lawyer. They, they said something. Uh, they, I believe they said they wanted a lawyer dog or something like that. It, it made no sense. I think they wanted like a bulldog, like a, a, a lawyer that's going to fight for them. But they said the words, I want a lawyer dog. You all can probably look this up and uh, and find uh, find this case on the Internet or find this issue on the Internet. Uh, and the Supreme Court said that's not enough. That's not enough. It was too ambiguous. So, again, it must be unambiguous. It must be clear. It must be unequivocal. I want a lawyer. I'm not speaking until I have a lawyer. The end. Uh, a dog. Maybe it was a, a dog lawyer, lawyer dog. I, I don't exactly remember. So, and he was speaking in slang. Exactly. He was probably speaking in some type of slang that he understood, but it was ambiguous enough to where the Supreme, I think it was the Supreme Court. I'm not 100%. Uh, the court said uh, that's not enough. That was too ambiguous. That was too confusing. That was not enough. And he was denied uh, his right to uh, asserting his Fifth Amendment. So Miranda was not violated in that case. By the way, just another reminder, lots and lots of people in here for this for this topic. I'm very, very happy to see. Don't forget to like this video, comment below, subscribe to the channel, hit that notification bell so you get notified of new videos and so on and so forth. All right. So, uh, even perfectly innocent citizens, this is the issue, perfectly innocent citizens may get themselves into trouble even when the police are trying to do their jobs properly. Let me read that again because this is so important. Perfectly innocent citizens may get themselves into trouble even when the police are trying to do their jobs properly. Because police malfeasance is entirely unnecessary for the innocent to convict themselves by mistake. You may say something that is going to um, 
you know, either contradict or reaffirm a statement of another mistaken witness somewhere else that the police have interrogated previously or will interrogate in the future. And they will be under the complete and honest but mistaken belief that you were at such and such place in such and such time when you were completely somewhere else. And when you make that admission that you were somewhere else and they have this mistaken witness putting you at the scene of the crime, not only do they have that witness's statement, which in and of itself would mean absolutely nothing, but with your statement that you were somewhere else, you are now contradicting a witness that has now gained magical credibility. This is such a crucial point, okay? So if you don't volunteer any information, the information that this witness has means absolutely nothing because, again, like I said, they could be mistaken. But when you reaffirm or deconfirm or contradict any type of information that the police already have, you run into trouble, even though that information may be false, misleading, uh, inapplicable, and, and completely unreliable, okay? So that that is huge. That is huge. That is already right there reason enough never to talk to the police. Next, talking to police may bring up erroneous but believable evidence against even innocent witnesses, okay? Erroneous but believable evidence. Again, going back to the issue of mistake, just because the police are conducting an investigation and evidence may be pointing to a certain individual to have committed the crime does not mean that they're right. Police make mistakes. They're human beings. Okay. Evidence that they may have received, statements they may have received may have been misleading. For instance, for those of you who have seen The Lincoln Lawyer, one of my favorite movies, by the way, there's so many, it's laden with, with ethical violations. And, and it, you know, I don't recommend if you're ever uh, an attorney, do not follow the, the letter of, of, of that movie because you will get disbarred quickly, then you can blink. But there's one thing that uh, uh, Matthew McConaughey's character does in that movie that I think is very, very accurate. And it's completely uh, discredit one of the witnesses that took the stand um, and the fact that they are a per they committed perjury on another case. Boom. That witness automatically loses all credibility because they have just testified in a court of law accusing someone of, uh, of being uh, the, the, the murderer, I think. And the, the lawyer has shown that they have a history of perjury. And it was the prosecutor who put the witness on the stand. Now that witness has lost all credibility. The trial has gone to shit. And, you know, and then the defendant walked away from that case. I think, again, if you watch the movie, uh, Matthew McConaughey's character goes on to do all sorts of various other things after that, which, which is, again, so many ethical violations. It'll make your head spin if you know anything about the legal profession. But... What is, uh, it was a jailhouse informant, exactly, Eric. Uh, the jailhouse informant, and because uh, Matthew McConaughey was able to show that this individual, the jailhouse informant, uh, committed perjury in a previous case, he was able to completely discredit his credibility in, in this case um, uh, that was before the court. So again, uh, everything that he previously said, the jailhouse informant, would have been accurate and believable and used to convict uh, Matthew McConaughey's client, but because he was able to to go around it, uh, it it um, helped him out. Uh, hey, Liberty Cause, uh, Willie Zar, thank you for the ten dollar dono. Uh, I'm not helping you with your investigation against me theory. Basically, that's that's exactly what it is. Uh, I'm not giving you free evidence. Okay, you want evidence, you go and find it on your own. I'm not going to provide you with free evidence. Some of you who have heard my talk about why to always refuse the breathalyzer and the field sobriety test goes to exactly the heart of that. You are depriving the prosecution, you're depriving the police officer, you're depriving the government, you're depriving the judge, you're depriving the jury, all of whom are going to be deciding, helping decide your case into whether or not to convict you. You're depriving them of the most critical evidence, evidence that you yourself uh, are, are capable of providing. And if you deprive them of all this evidence, then they have to build a case on less than, you know, th that you would have provided them. You make their case harder. You make their case smaller. You make their case a lot less um, uh, strong, a, a lot weaker against you, I, I guess I should say. Individuals convinced of their own innocence may have unknowingly, this is another one, unknowingly committed a crime which they inadvertently confessed to during questioning. 
This follows the reasoning of uh, Justice Robert Jackson in Watts versus Indiana, which, by the way, Robert Jackson, if any of you know, uh, a huge, huge uh, American figure, uh, was a, a prosecutor, an attorney general, later a Supreme Court justice in the 1940s and 50s. Um, the problem is, and, and this is as of 2012, there were at least 10,000, 10 freaking thousand federal laws. Okay. And a lot of them quote to and cite that you may be convicted under this law and any other state law or international law or federal law that is related to such and such, you know, criminal activity. Uh, especially when it comes to transporting goods, for instance, from uh, one country to, to another being the second being usually the United States, of course. So by making a statement, you may not even realize that you just admitted to the commission of a crime that you didn't even know was a crime. So again, why give the benefit to the police officer? It, it makes absolutely no sense. As the, uh, Professor Duane puts it, where's the rush? Right? <laughs> where's the rush? If you're going to be convicted anyway, let it, you'll get convicted later. Where's the rush? Why, why rush into giving them free stuff to help them out in their investigation? You, tell me right now. You, Chad, go ahead. Give me, give me a, a valid reasoning as to why you should talk to the police and, and speed up the, your conviction process. It makes absolutely no sense. I doubt that anybody is going to be able to come up with, with any uh, a cogent uh, and sound. It's got to be not only cogent, valid, and sound, the three philosophical uh, core values of any argument uh, in order for you to, to be convincing. And I doubt anybody's going to be able to do that. Uh, Justice Jackson, by the way, whom I, I just mentioned, I, I want to read a quote from you. This is from a case of Watts v. Indiana, uh, a, a very, very interesting case from 1949. And it's 33 U.S. 49. And this is on page 59, a case from the United States uh, Supreme Court. Uh, Justice Robert Jackson is concurring in part and dissenting in part. The, the, the facts of the case don't matter, but this is the statement that I want to read to you from that case. He says, any lawyer, these are his words, in 1949, this is 71 years ago, almost 72, any lawyer worth his, today we would say his or her, any lawyer worth his salt will tell the suspect, your client, in no uncertain terms to make no statement to police under any circumstances, end quote. Let me read it again. Any lawyer worth his salt will tell the suspect in no uncertain terms to make no statement to police under any circumstances. Basically, don't talk to the police. And this is the United States Supreme Court decision. This is a dissent in that decision, but regardless, it, this is in print. This is coming from a Supreme Court justice in the United States in 1949. So this is how important it is. This is not just coming from some lawyer in Kentucky sitting in his office doing a YouTube live stream. This is, this is the justices of the highest court in the land telling the public that any individual who is licensed to practice law, who is worth their salt, meaning, you know, they're competent at their job. They're not a total uh, uh, pretender or, or wannabe or unable to perform their job uh, dutifully, will tell their client under any circumstances, you know, this is the title of the video, to make no statement to police. Jazz trucking. Wow. $50 dono. Thanks, brother. Appreciate it. I can, you can feel the enthusiasm, right? This is, I told you, this topic is just explosive. It's so crucial, and so many people don't understand it. I, I have to uh, throw, throw that in. So um, thank you so much, man. Thank you. I, I appreciate that. And, and again, it, so that was 1949, right? We talked about Justice Jackson, 1949. And uh, the Supreme Court, in a decision of Ohio versus Reiner, this is uh, 532 uh, U.S. 17, uh, and this is a decision from 2001, uh, and it was decided by, I, I want to see, it was per curiam. So we don't, we don't have an exact judge who has written this decision. It was decided per curiam. Um, uh, the court said, we have, this is 2001. This is only 19 years ago. Uh, as far as the United States Supreme Court law is concerned, that is literally brand new. You know, law is always running behind. Uh, so 2001, the Supreme Court said, in Ohio versus Reiner, 532 U.S. 17 on page 20. 
We have emphasized that one of the Fifth Amendment's basic functions is to protect innocent men. Okay? So the Fifth Amendment's basic function is to protect innocent men. Good. Who otherwise might be ensnared by ambiguous circumstances. There it is again. Ambiguous circumstances. Something that has led the police to... to go on maybe a, a wild goose hunt or or down a, um, a you know down a rabbit hole that maybe they they don't belong in ambiguous circumstances truthful responses of an innocent witness here it is truthful responses of an innocent witness as well as those of a wrongdoer may provide the government with incriminating evidence from the speaker's own mouth so why do it? Why give them the benefit? Why provide them with this opportunity to use your own words against you? And it may be on tape. It may be written. It may be a written confession. Anything you say will be used against you. Okay. I said it before. I will say it again. It's not a could be. It will be. It, it, the warning is just a little bit more, more um, massaged. It's a little bit lighter. It's a little bit more... Um, uh, you know, but the reality is anything you say will be used against you in a court of law. Hey, Joey. Hey, a Kane. Happy Thanksgiving guys. Welcome to the, the heated topic of why you should never, ever, ever, ever under any circumstances talk to the police. So as I already explained, prosecutors will take statements out of context in order to attempt to convict you. Uh, Sometimes you will get carried away. You know, you'll start saying uh, things that are truthful, 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 truthful. And then all of a sudden you'll squeeze in a half truth. And then you'll go on truthful, truthful, truthful. That half truth will absolutely positively will be used against you because innocent people don't lie, right? Innocent people always tell the truth. And if you are innocent, why did you give a half truth? And if, if it later comes out that this half truth is it was a half truth is not entirely true and they can prove it. Well, then you're screwed and then it's your ass. And now it's your statement against the police officer. Whereas before it would just be your statement against an officer's suspicions. That is huge. That is absolutely huge. So don't ever talk to the police. Uh, our memories are fallible. We're not always going to remember the facts 100%. We think that we do. We think that we will because, the, you know, people say the truth will set you free. But sometimes it won't. Sometimes the truth will lock you up, especially if you're. it's a mistaken truth and, and all the other elements that we've talked about previously. So, again, even if you do state 100% truth, this is, by the way, we're, we've long since entered the realm of fiction, fantasy, and, and, and utopia. This is not reality. People, you will never find a situation, a case where I will be able to talk to a client before he goes to talk to the police for an interview. And uh, they're going to be so absolutely well prepared that they're going to tell them the absolute truth and they're going to walk out of there and the police officer is going to say, you know what, I think your client is innocent and I'm not going to press any charges. Uh, I'm not going to recommend any charges to the prosecutor and the prosecutor will not press any charges. So in this hypothetical scenario where an individual, let's say, does speak the nothing but truth, 100 percent truth, not a single lie, even then, as Ohio v. Reiner just indicated, speaking nothing but the truth can still land charges against you. Anybody shocked? No. Everything we talked about points to the same direction. Even if you speak 100% of the truth, not a single lie, you can still have charges against you. So it makes absolutely no sense to speak to the police whatsoever. I mean, what is the point? If this doesn't convince you enough, if you still think that you are so silver-tongued and, and you're going to be able to uh, convince the police that uh, you will have absolutely no part, you were nowhere near da-da-da-da-da, then, then may God be with you because you, you, know, you don't need a lawyer. You need a priest at that point. Uh, you, you're past redemption. <laughs> because if this doesn't convince you that if you speak 100% of the truth and you can still be charged and, and you still are going to go ahead and talk, that's it. I mean, th there's, not, there's nobody that can help you. There's nothing that can help you at that point. 
So uh, as you'll see from the video, like I said, I will be linking it in the description below. And by the way, again, don't forget to like this video. We're at like 330 viewers. Holy crap. Don't forget to like this video, all you newcomers. Thank you for coming in. Uh, comment below, subscribe to the channel, hit that notification bell. I know I've been in, uh, uh, ignoring comments. I'm so sorry. I've been trying to, to get as many comments on the sideline as much as I could, but it's absolutely impossible to capture all of them. There's like 100 comments that came in because we have so many people in here. Uh, but you guys, most of you I've, I've noticed are, are on point, and I really, really appreciate that because the last couple of times we've had people go a little bit off, off topic. But when you watch the video, so the video that I'm going to include in the description below, uh, you'll see the, a former police officer who speaks after him uh, from the Virginia Police Department, and he confirms everything that the police officer, uh, that the professor has said, excuse me. Nothing good ever comes of speaking to the police. There's nothing more that you need. And again, if you think that you're savvy and you're going to be able to talk your way out of things, you're sorely mistaken. Don't be fooled. Don't be misled. You, you will make a mistake. And you won't. sometimes you won't even realize this. We described you may be violating a law you don't even know is a law. And how can you, uh, how can you know that you're violating a law if you don't know the law, Right. Uh, do I suggest having a civil lawyer on retainer? Thank you, Pimer, for the two bucks. Uh, do I suggest? No, no, you don't need to have a civil lawyer on retainer unless you plan on, uh, you know, getting into trouble civilly, of course. This is not a criminal question. Uh, I mean, it depends on what line of work you're in. Maybe, maybe it's beneficial. I don't know. I don't know. Uh, it's a, a, um, it's a confusing, confusing time. Confusing question. Did Jazz Trucking ask a question? Not 100%. I, I, I saw that you donated a lot. Thank you, brother. He said, I appreciate you. Uh, Burgess v. Tompkins, in a case that says you must assert either verbally or in writing your intention to refuse to give a statement to law enforcement, is that about right? I'm not sure. I, I'm not familiar with that case directly, Jazz Trucking, um, and I, I can't answer that. And never make an apology statement. Oh, Jazz trucking, you're on point, brother. This is very crucial. And in that video, they, they discussed this. Sometimes police officers will say, you know what? Okay, forget about it. You don't want to give me a confession. You don't want to admit to the crime. You don't want to tell me that you were there, that you did it, that you were involved. That's okay. Listen, all I ask from you is make an apology statement. Simply write down, here's a piece of paper. Uh, here's a piece of paper. Just write down, you know, if it's a burglary, an alleged burglary, let's say. Uh, they'll say, look, write this down, just uh, write out in your own words. Well, I don't know what to write. No, write in your own words. You know, who cares? Just write out, uh, I apologize for breaking into your house. I'm so sorry. Uh, I, I shouldn't have stolen the things that I've stolen. Uh, I will never do it again. Signed, you know, John Smith, uh, uh, the, the guy who burglarized your house. You know, that's it. Just an innocent apology statement. I'm just apologizing for what I did, right? What is the police officer going to do with that piece of paper? They're going to admit it. Well, the prosecutor, they're going to give it to the prosecutor. And the prosecutor is going to admit it into evidence as a written confession. Number one, it's going to be signed. It's going to be also signed by the police officer as a witness, dated, in your own handwriting, and once it's presented to the jury, I mean, forget about it. And it won't get to that point. Again, any lawyer worth their salt probably won't even consider taking a case like that to a jury. So it's stupid. Do not write apology letters. Do not make any statements written, oral, verbal, recorded, on the phone, nada. All of that will be used against you. That is the DUI guy's message on this Saturday, November 28th, at between 6.30 and 7.10 p.m. Eastern. So with that, uh, holy crap, 342 people. Uh, I hope you all enjoyed this. I mean, this is, uh, let's, let's just dive into questions. Uh, dive into questions. I, um, I want to hear, I want to hear what you guys think. Uh, are, are there some of you, after all that I've said, again, don't forget to like this video, all you newcomers, comment below, subscribe to the channel, hit that notification bell if you haven't already, et cetera. Um, for those of you who, who are brand new here and, and, or maybe just came in or, or even our old timers, which I, I, dear God, I hope that you are, you know, better by now. Do any of you think that this, there's still a, a realm of possibility where you should talk to the police? I, I, I'm going to wait. 
I'm going to wait. I'm going to keep reading comments and I want to see if anybody want to make an argument. Um, uh, minors, by the way, Bob Ross twin uh, have a completely different category. Their uh, juveniles are are outside the whole Miranda situation. They're treated completely differently. So we're not going to be delving into to that arena. So far, I see no, no, okay, never, good, never, ever, ever, good. If you're the, okay, so Zen, this is this is a common uh, contra question. I'm glad you brought it up. Zen asks, what if you're the one who called the police? What if you're the one who actually picked up the phone? You know, you've been a victim of a crime. That is slightly different, okay? What I'm talking about is talking to the police when they come to you, okay? Obviously, when you've been a victim of a crime, if they're going to come to your door and say, knock, knock, you know, how can we help you? And you're going to say, I'm not talking to you. Please leave. Uh, that's really not going to help uh, finding the perpetrator who has committed the crime against you. Right. So you want to be direct. You don't don't exaggerate. Obviously, don't lie. Tell them what has been taken or who has been beaten or what has been stolen or whatever. And uh, and let them compile their report. Obviously, if you are the victim of a crime. That's a little different. Now, also be careful so you don't get implicated in that crime because uh, if, it, let's say, if it's an assault case and you volunteer the information of, oh yeah, I, 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 uh, I grabbed her wrists and then da 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 da, da whatever. Well, the, the police officer is going to notice that grabbed her wrists portion, and that is probably going to be used against you. Okay, so so pay attention to that. Uh, you you got to be careful. You you if if you can possibly be implicated in the crime itself, uh, it, it may be better to retain a lawyer in order to even report the crime. Okay, that's that's all I'm going to say about that. Uh, a Kane, thank you for the five dollar dono. Uh, when and how, in God's name, did the legislation that allow officers to lie during interactions with the public ever become passed? It wasn't passed. It's simply uh, part of uh, everyday life, unfortunately. A Kane, police officers are permitted to lie. It's not in the books. Uh, it's simply they, they are permitted to to fabricate information when when investigating. It's just the way it works. Now, of course, they're not permitted to lie while on the stand. That is still uh, reprehensible. The only pro problem is catching them in the act. And especially if you don't have so, you know, for some of you who may not be familiar with the law, perjury requires two sworn statements made under oath uh, and both contradicting each other. OK, those are the elements. A sworn statement made under oath in two different times, and they both contradict each other. That is the only way you can get perjury. So if one time the police officer says the car was going 55, and another time in testimony on the stand, he says the car was going 65, you can charge that officer with perjury because he has made a statement under oath. The car was going 55. Then he testifies that the car was going 65. Those are two contradictory statements. They're both made under oath. The, the officer can be charged with perjury. That, But in what scenario would that type of situation happen they're very very limited they do exist they are possible and uh i've seen those scenarios uh, and especially when the um the individual the suspect the client is the one uh making their own independent recording and then a police officer testifies and then the recording is admitted into evidence to show and contradict that the events that have occurred absolutely do not match what the officer has just testified to because the statement was made, it was under oath, and then you have something that is obviously not under oath but is directly contradicting what was said under oath, then you also have the potential charge of perjury. Uh, P. Murph, thank you for the five bucks, man. Uh, what do you say when cops pull you over? Should you have a pre-printed statement? You don't have to. You don't have to, you know, say uh, one of the most common phrases, some of you First Amendment auditors that are probably in here know, uh, officer, am I free to go, is the most common question. Uh, are you are you going to, uh, am I detained or am I free to go, right? So the officer said, well, I'm not detaining you, but I'm just asking, do you realize how fast you were going? Officer, am I being detained or am I free to go? He, you know, he'll probably be really taken aback at that point. He'll be really annoyed with you, but he'll say, look, I'm just going to write you this ticket and uh, and then you're free to go. Okay. All right, do what you got to do, and I'll be on my way. Thank you, officer. That's it. That's it. That's the end of the interaction, the beginning, middle, and end of the interaction. Now, of course, if the officer is going to be uh, a prick to you, you just have to deal with it. Uh, but maintain, maintain 
maintain. That's the key. Do not be rude. Do not fight back, God forbid. Do not try to win your case on the street. You will always lose, okay? Simply, politely ask the officer, am I free to go or am I being detained? A hundred times if you have to, eventually they will crack because they will realize there's absolutely no getting through you. And when they realize there's absolutely no getting through you, they lost their power. They have no reasonable suspicion to keep you there. They have no probable cause to arrest you. They're going to let you go. Now, if they have a reasonable suspicion, let's say the smell of marijuana is coming from your car, well, now you have a problem, and that's a, a serious problem, and you should absolutely positively not talk to the police at that point. So don't talk to the police. Lady Odos, Ados, excuse me, thank you for the five bucks, uh, didn't talk to police. Prosecutor used a common a comment to third party as a statement. How can I challenge it? Thanks. That sounds like you're asking for legal advice. I can't really give that to you. I'm sorry. Um, if you wish to, you're more than welcome to email me. I'm happy to answer the that question, uh, giving you my personal opinion. Uh, I don't talk about personal cases. We can talk generally. I'm happy to talk concepts, but I'm not answering your own personal legal problems. I'm sorry. Um, is it true that once you invoke the fifth and or ask for an attorney, the police must cease all questioning, further immediate questioning? Absolutely, F. Lotog. You nailed it on the head. This is what I've been talking about. As soon as you make the statement, officer, I, I remember, uh, I forget who it was. It may have been my criminal law uh, professor in law school. He said, imagine in your mind's eye, if you're ever, God forbid, in this situation where you're seated in a little room and there's a little table and there are two chairs, maybe there's a camera in the corner or whatever, um, imagine in blood red letters painted, maybe even in blood, you know, make it vivid, make it just something that you will remember for the rest of your life. I want to speak to my lawyer, period. And that's the only statement that comes out of your mouth, right? That's the only statement you see on the wall when the officer comes in and starts asking you questions and you repeat that over and over. Usually you probably won't have to, you'll say it once and they'll lay off. Uh, if they're civil, I mean, you, you don't know who you're going to walk into in that interrogation room. They may be, you know, all sorts of things. So when they ask you, you know, uh, who, uh, who are you, where are you, da, 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 whatever, don't volunteer any information. I want to speak to my lawyer. I will not speak without my lawyer present. Any variation on the theme, but make it again, concrete, unambiguous, uh, and, and, and direct, no slang, you know, no lawyer dogs, no, just a simple lawyer. I want my lawyer. I will not speak until my lawyer is present. I want my lawyer to be here. Whatever you want, any variation on the theme. Uh, hey, Liberty Cause, good to see you and uh, have a good evening. Thanks for coming. So uh, yeah, th that's that's a very, very good question at Flotog and, and that's the answer. Uh, if they lie, Paul... Uh, <laughs> They're going to lie all the time. So if they lie and say they smell something, you're going to have to fight it in court. You have absolutely no choice. You're not going to be able to win on the street. They're not going to let you go just because, oh, shit, I just realized I lied and he caught me in a lie. I mean, it's never going to happen. Usually police officers don't just outright lie. Uh, they will They will usually have uh, their motive is, let's say they, they search a car and they find a a brick of cocaine or a pound of weed or something, then they have a motive to lie about why they stopped you and why they got to searching of your car or something like that, okay? So there they have a motive. But typically, police officers, they won't just outright lie and and, and make up a story as to why they, they pulled you over just for the sake of pulling you over. Um, I remember somebody telling me a story that, um, uh, you know, sometimes police officers just randomly pull over cars and... Uh, one out of 10, again, this is, it takes time, I guess, to, to kind of get there. But uh, one out of 10 will smell like weed just because statistics, you know, one out of 10 will smell like marijuana because somebody smoked in the car, somebody had some weed in the car, whatever. So nine out of 10 people get stopped unconstitutionally, but they don't need a lawyer. Why? Because they don't get charged. They just get released and, and let go on their merry way. Whereas that nine out of 10 uh, or the one out of 10, excuse me, uh, the police officer will, will maybe make up like, yeah, I stopped them for speeding or whatever, two miles over the speed limit. I've seen those. I've seen a one mile over the speed limit ticket 
they were probably hoping that the person had something. Maybe they were just desperate for money. Maybe they were just hoping. Uh, and then the person paid it. I mean, I, I was shocked when I saw that. I completely accidentally ran into that while I was looking up one of my cases. And I was like, this is a one mile per hour speeding ticket and they they paid it and they pled guilty it was the, the dumbest thing i've ever seen but it is what it is so uh and and then you know they'll stop the, the individual for one mile over the speed limit they'll this is one of the 10 percent cases where they smell weed and boom they're just gonna conduct their investigation and charge the the individual with possession because here in kentucky unfortunately marijuana is still not legal thc at least cbd uh is legal uh, but uh, any amount of THC is illegal to possess, unfortunately. So uh, hopefully they'll change soon. Willie Zar, thank you for the 10 bucks. Uh, the courts were set up to protect people's rights in the USA. Why then do the courts give cops so much power, do you think? I mean, they have to. They absolutely have to because if they don't, nobody's going to ever want to become a police officer. If you're just going to be harassed and berated once you get that badge, I mean, no, who who would want that position? So, uh, And you want people to actually enforce the law. So the hope is that individuals will enforce the law rather than break it. And so uh, police officers are given a whole lot more power than uh, than necessary. But I, I, again, at the end of the day, there's there's a whole philosophical argument as to why they 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 have the power that they do, and we're not going to delve into that. Noah Baker, thanks for the dollar ninety nine. Can Lil Wayne beat his gun charge? I don't know. Maybe I haven't been following that dude too close. Uh, P Murph, can it be seen as hiding something? Thank you for the five bucks. Can it be seen as hiding something when you just don't want to talk because of the subject? And will it be held against you? Absolutely not. Okay. So can it be seen as you hiding something naturally? Of course, because police officers, and this is how they get you to try to talk. Oh, come on. Talk to me. You know, if you're innocent of this, just tell me and we're going to put this behind you and we're going to move on our merry way. Just, just talk to me. Just talk to me. Just talk to me. Just talk to me. Right. Why do they want you to talk so much? Because they know that no matter what you say, you're, they're going to be able to, to pin a crime on you. They'll be able to convict you. They'll be able to charge you. They'll be able to use what you say against you. Now, if you don't testify, there is a jury instruction in Kentucky and I imagine many other states that if you do not take the stand and testify, the jury actually gets an instruction that the failure of you to testify cannot be used against you, okay? So you not talking to the police on the scene, you not talking in court. Now, for what it's worth, again, we can get into psychological and philosophical discussion as to whether or not jurors will truly uh, take that information in and, and really you know, believe because people, innocent people don't just sit quietly. It's true. You know, we, I, I'm well aware of that, but at the end of the day, your ability to beat a case when they don't have that information versus when they do again, night and day, nothing to talk about. So will it be used? Uh, will it look like you're hiding something on the scene? Maybe to a jury? Sure. Who cares? I innocent people who are smart or even guilty people who are smart don't talk to the police. Why? Because they know that nothing good will ever come of it. And I'm sure that I'm going to be able or any, you know, uh, good orator will be able to explain to a jury that uh, my client did not talk to the police because he didn't trust them. Who, who right here, raise show of hands uh, right here in my chat right now. We got 400, 420, <laughs> how ironic, 420 people. All right. Raise your hand. If, um, if you're seated on my jury and I tell you my client did not talk to the police because they did not trust them, how many of you by show of hands would, would believe me? Because I've had these cases, by the way. How many of you right now, and if you don't believe, thumbs down or something if, if you don't believe. How many of you right now, if you were seated on my jury and I told you my client did not testify to the police, uh, did not talk to the police and did not testify because he didn't trust the police and he doesn't trust them now, doesn't trust the courts and he doesn't wish to testify, you're going to believe that my client is doing it because they, they don't trust the system and they don't trust the, the police. Let me see the, that show of hands. And, and I will get to your donation 05 Red Rex in one moment. So there we go. Pretty much universal. I don't even see a single... Uh, thumbs down because, and I've had these cases where my my client in in a DUI scenario, for instance, uh, refused the breathalyzer, 
and uh, it's it's just it's it's incredible. It's absolutely incredible. They they refuse, and 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 I ask them why did you refuse, and they say, well, look, I've done everything that the officer asked me to do, and where did it land me? In handcuffs in jail. That's it. They don't trust the police. That's why they refuse to continue to cooperate. Uh, zero five Red Rex one. Thank you for the ten bucks, uh, brother. I appreciate it. DUI guy, love your videos. Thank you. God bless you. Helping people when they need. Thanks, man. I, I really appreciate it, brother. I really appreciate it. Uh, do you have any advice to get out of jury duty? Uh, no, that's that's not legal. If you have a valid reason to get out of jury duty, you can uh, ascertain it. But just trying to get out of jury duty is is a crime. Don't do it. If you don't have a valid reason now, now with COVID, of course you can, uh, there's so many other reasons that you can, what's the best way to deal with a one mile per hour speeding ticket, pay a lawyer to take care of it because chances are, we're probably going to be able to get it dismissed. I thought you were a do it yourself guy. I am a do it yourself guy. I don't understand what you mean. Always lawyer up Minnesota news. Now how's it going? Implied consent, uh, look, the drifter, there's a separate topic. That's, that's a long, long discussion. We're not going to get into it. I want to wrap this up in the next few minutes here. Yes, I handle civil lawsuits, Kemper Van, as long as it's in Kentucky or thereabouts. So does anybody have any questions? Does anybody still have doubts? Any doubters in there? Any doubters in there? that um, still think that, yes, I should talk to the police. There are lots and lots of questions, uh, Hamid. So I, oh, so warrant to search your car. Yeah, I've been ignoring that question because we're not talking about that today. Next question. A good attorney in Minnesota. I can recommend a few attorneys in uh, in Minnesota, depending on what you need. I know some, but not many. Lord Ja asks, "What if you did talk to the police and they did, and they use it against you?" I don't understand the question. I just ex talked for an hour about what happens and what not to do. So, I mean, okay, I, I think I understand the question. So if you talk to the police and they use it against you, I mean, you just screwed yourself. That, that's the answer. Construction attorneys, email me. Uh, I might, I don't know. Hamed, we'll talk about that topic. I think I have a video actually on, on search warrants, if I'm not mistaken. I think I've done a live of that. So I may have uh, I may have that in my bank. Any other questions? Can a Canadian talk to police? I don't know. Uh, my chance, my chances are uh, my gut's saying probably not, but Canada is a whole different beast. Other countries, I, I don't know how well the advice for Americans will work. Because I know in Great Britain, again, I always like to talk about Great Britain as a, a contra example where police officers, I believe, are not permitted to lie. And if they lie, then evidence gets suppressed. I mean, God bless the United Kingdom for that. Uh, must you verbalize? Oh, this is a great question. F low talk. Must I verbalize that I'm invoking the fifth in order to exercise it? A uh, family lawyer, Merb. Merb 34 cited a Supreme Court case that declares this. No, no, that doesn't sound right. That doesn't sound right. Do you have to, unless you're testifying. Okay, now this is key. There's a difference between testifying in court and, and being under an investigation behind closed doors. So if you're, if you're being investigated, just say, I want to talk to my lawyer. And, you know, unequivocal, direct, unambiguous, et cetera. Uh, but if you're taking the stand, uh, you must affirmatively invoke the fifth. That's that's a totally, totally different um, arena. So that's probably what that lawyer was talking about.
But behind closed doors, you don't have to articulate any specific verbiage other than unambiguously request a lawyer. Once you invoke your right to an attorney, here's a great question, Taylor Kennedy. I was waiting for this. Once you invoke your right to an attorney, can they still try to encourage you to speak? Absolutely. There will be an indirect violation of the law, but that still does not mean that they can't do it. You know, They're going to do it because it's behind closed doors and they're going to try and get you to talk. Now, of course, God forbid, they, if it is recorded, usually what they do is they try and get you to talk. You invoke your right to an attorney. They convince you. They, they try to convince you to talk. Eventually, they convince you to talk. And once you start talking, it's only then that they turn on the recording. They're sneaky bastards uh, about this a lot of the time. So you got to watch for that. And it, all that will be on the recording is you talking and them, you know, maybe reading the Miranda in the beginning once they realize that you're actually uh, free and, and ready to speak. So it, very, 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 be very careful and cautious because some of those sleazebags use that tactic. So, you know, invoke your right to a lawyer and don't back off from that. You, somebody in chat even said they had that exact scenario happen to them. There you go. Direct proof. Well, for what it's worth, taking the, the individual's word for it. Oh, here's a good one. Uh, Humberto Garcia says, I am a mute. Uh, and recording them and they start questioning me. Obviously, I can't you know, articulate to them that uh, I would need a lawyer. How can I communicate... Uh, just simply, you know, gesture, I would say gesture, like to the police officer, like, I can't speak, you know, gesture to your mouth, I need I need a, a pen and paper, they'll bring you a pen and paper and just write down, um, I want my lawyer, I will not talk to you until I have my lawyer here. He ha there you go, Shane says, I had to ask them four times before the cops left me alone. Four times he had to say, I, I want to speak to my lawyer. That's insane. But I believe it. Absolutely believe it. Don't answer checkpoints at a, uh, uh, don't answer questions at a checkpoint, Taylor. Same thing. Do the police have to provide a lawyer when one is requested? No. Uh, that's probably going to be your responsibility, but they can't keep asking you questions, P. Murph. That's pretty much it. Hey, Joey. All right. So I want to cut this short. Uh, it's been an hour. Uh, it's been a pleasure. Thank you all for coming. Uh, I think uh, I've answered pretty much all the, the relevant questions. I apologize if I missed your question. Uh, we'll try and catch it maybe at the next live stream. Uh, I don't know what the topic is going to be uh, next week. So I'm going to create a new uh, calendar uh, for December. And I'm going to create um, topics for, again, every Saturday, 6.30 p.m. Eastern. I'm right here in this office recording a live like I'm doing right now. Uh, I had so much fun. This has probably been... I, I've never had, I think at our peak, we had like 430 or something concurrent viewers. That's probably the highest number I've ever had. Thank you guys so much. This is this has been incredible. Uh, I love you all. Thank you. Uh, so I'll be creating a, a roster uh, for next month for December. Uh, how many Saturdays do we have in, in December? We have, looks like four. So the 5th, the 12th, the 19th, the 26th, I'll be live streaming. Uh, God willing, maybe, maybe not the 26th. It's like the day after Christmas, people are probably just going to be, uh, uh, you know, celebrating with family and all that. Uh, so I probably, uh, may not stream on that day, but we'll figure it out. We'll figure it out. Um, uh, yeah, 6 30 PM Eastern, uh, 5 30 PM central, 4 30 mountain, 3 30, um, Pacific. Uh, so, in 11 a.m. in Australia, I believe, for those of you Aussies here. So, uh, again, uh, thank you so much for coming. I really appreciate it. I hope you all had fun. I hope you all learned something. You finally learned to beat it into your heads not to talk to the police. Again, unless you're a victim of a crime, it's a little different. You know, you, obviously, if you don't tell them what happened, you're going to have a little bit of trouble reporting the crime to the police. But short of that, if they're coming to you, 
What do you do, chat? If they're asking you questions, what do you do? Don't talk. Shh. Don't talk to the police. Don't talk to the police. Zip it. SDFU. Shut up. Exactly. You got it. Don't say anything. Get an attorney. Keep your mouth shut. Shush them. Get a lawyer. Lawyer, 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 lawyer. Do not talk. Shut the hell up. Am I being detained? Lawyer up. Am I free to go? Call them funny looking. Don't do that. Don't answer questions. Never talk, period. You guys get it. You guys get it. You guys get it. All right. Thank you all so much for coming. Have a wonderful, wonderful Saturday. And I will see you on Saturday, December 5th. Peace out.